Cause he wore the light And the lights I've been with Midnight through the city I've been going through some things Trying to get my money right Push the bucket to the limit Push that bitch into the fence Gotta get the full control Gotta get my money right And the lights I've been with Beside me, even if I'm blinded, is that energy the same? Got relationships with my list to tread down on my tires. Regardless, I'll keep riding. You know, you can count on me. On me. I've been driving now for some days. I've been trying to find another way. Trying to find an answer to my friends. To my friends. To my friends. No brakes on my foot on the gas. These niggas want to see me crash. I see through looking like glass chain. Trials and tribulations. Can't all like bitches, I hate them. Tissues with my people's faces. Give it away, baby. It's blurry and pain. I switch to these lanes and I'm racing. Conditions that niggas is racing. Sometimes I just gotta escape it. Yeah, lights, I've been with Midnight through the sea. I've been going through some things, trying to get my mind right. Push the bucket to the limit. Push that bitch into the fish. Gotta get the full control. Gotta get my mind right. Yeah, lights, I've been with Surface, you can't see it in my mind. My thoughts are speeding, yeah. I'm trying to glue the pieces back. A little bit of space to clear my head. Sometimes I'm needing that. And it's hard to see the facts when you be attached. See the light, I don't need a match. I just be direct. I know one day I find my way home. Riding dirty, leaning on these crooked one way roads. I've been hurting, maybe I should just sit that shit slow. Driving circles, I ain't got no Getting started in four minutes, everybody. Grab a drink. I've been with midnight through the sea. I've been going through some things, trying to get my mind right. Push the bucket to the limit, push that bitch into the fish. Gotta get the full control, gotta get my mind right. Yeah, lights, I've been with midnight through the sea. I've been going through some things, trying to get my mind right. Push the bucket to the limit, push that bitch into the fish. Gotta get the full control, gotta get my mind right. Yeah.
Cause he want a light And yeah, lights I've been with Midnight through the city I've been going through some things Trying to get my mind right Push the bucket to the lid Push that bitch into the fence Gotta get the full control Gotta get my mind right Yeah, lights I've been with Midnight through the city I've been going through some things Trying to get my mind right Push the bucket to the lid Push that bitch into the fence Gotta get the full control Gotta get my mind right what's going on everybody how y'all doing on this friday got me and my guy e2 blue in the building what's going on e2 how you doing i'm, I'm doing great wonderful yeah bro so look before we do anything else wanted to wish you a congratulations on you know uh, all of the school and everything paying off for you uh you want to talk to the people a, a little bit about about that and you know what you were able to accomplish but before you do that bro I got to play this for you. Congratulations. Oh, 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 oh my God. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. Was that Tyrese? Congratulations. Oh, 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 oh my God. <laughs> hey, yo, what was that from? <laughs> Oh, that it, 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 it might strike a nerve, but I think like something was going on where he was, uh, where his baby mom was trying to take him to court for a whole bunch more money for his baby or something like that. Oh, but you know, I held on to it for forever. Congratulations! I, oh, 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 oh my god, hey yo, <laughs> that is hilarious! Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so the congratulations is I I just graduated my um uh, my HVAC school. Um, my current job that I'm at now, I was in the apprenticeship program, uh, to get my HVAC license. So I passed my EPA test, and I am now a licensed um apprentice, so I can go out in the field and uh, work on some ACs and heats and. Heat pumps and and air handlers and and gas furnaces and all that good stuff. So, so what's up, bro? Hey, we need more people. Like, look, this this show ain't just about cowboys. We, we you know we real men. We talk about life. You know what I'm saying? I think that you know growing up, I kind of wish I did more trade. Like I had more of a trade. I bet you wish you had done that earlier, right? Well, see, this is the thing, yo. Like, and I tell people, and I use my life as a testimony. I'm what a year away from forty. I'm starting this late. Like there's some people in my apprenticeship is that in my apprenticeship class is young enough to be my son. So I tell you this: I got a college degree. I went to school for something totally different. It didn't work out. It did at first, but then after a while, it didn't work out. And I utilized my second skill, which is my hands. And that's why I tell people: you always have to have a fallback plan. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. So I know the people who came in, they came here because they wanted to hear some good cowboys talk, right? Because what it, it's this the title of this thing is called State of the uh, of the Cowboys, right? Can so, I can I can I say something real quick? Yeah, uh, before we get into that. And I was just thinking about this uh actually today while I was doing my inventory on my new truck. Um I'm starting to think that even though the Cowboys didn't do a lot, I still don't think that we have a bad roster. And I think even with other teams doing what they're doing, I still think we could keep Pat. Now, I know that we're going to get some things in the draft. I know that they're probably going to move around in the draft um, to get some pieces. But as long as they do what they need to do with what we have right now, I think we should be okay. Absolutely. Man, I was supposed to hit, look, I was supposed to hit the light, and I didn't even do that. Now, not hey, look, not not now. I'm blight skin out here, so oh, oh yeah, blight skin. Ass. Look, now, look, I did a skincare routine. Like, now, look, now y'all yeah. just my skincare. <laughs> but yeah, Tyler Smith. Uh, look, I I purposely didn't show you this clip. Uh, and this is actually shout out to uh, you know Hoffman because he got his own podcast out there. So for the people uh that that aren't subscribed to the eight the eighth round. Go ahead and subscribe to my man Brock Hoffman's channel. Uh, you know, I listened to the whole thing uh, today between him and Tyler Smith. It's a pretty pleasant show. But 
there was a snippet from it that you know I thought was very very beneficial to what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to okay. play that right now, and, and we're going to talk about it. And Wonderful. you know, I want to go ahead and preface this with you know I know you're willing to do whatever it, it takes for us to win a championship, right? Whether that's tackle or guard, but. I mean, you can kind of just hit on, like, I know we've talked about it a lot, you know, privately. Um, you know, what do you honestly feel more comfortable with? Guys, you know, and I'll, you know, I'll say this, guys. I'm coming off an extremely good year at guard. You know, I've had, you know, over this past year. And only going to get better. And only going to get better. Get yep. Highest of hey, Come on, highest, best in the land. Come on. <laughs> top of the top. Top of the top. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'm coming off a really good year at guard. You know, I'm feeling really comfortable at guard. I kind of like, you know, how the continuity is right now. Like mm -hmm. you said, I already prefaced this. I'm willing to do whatever it takes, y'all. And I'm able to do whatever it takes. Yep. 100%. And so, you know, we'll see what the future holds. You know, obviously, stay ready for anything. But for right now, I'm going to start left guard at Dallas Cowboys, y'all. Damn. Ooh. What you think, bro? Uh, I love think, it, bro. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I actually am really high on Tyler Smith. I think that he now knows what he needs to do. And i um, not saying he didn't before, but I think that now that um, Tyron Smith is gone, he can focus on his craft and he doesn't have to really worry about, have to keep moving around. Once he's solidified in that spot, that's it, man. That boy going to be an all pro. Yeah, I, I thought that it was pretty interesting. I mean, you hear Duke Mannyweather say these things all the time. And this is what I want to say about Duke Mannyweather, because I do think that he has a wealth of knowledge. But Duke and, and a high school coach once told me this once before, right? When you're a trainer, you know what I'm saying? Like people are paying you to train them. Mm -hmm. So so the so for the people that, that really matter, like coaches. Like in the football operations aspect, coaches, GMs, scouts, all that stuff. Yeah, they're not really looking for the opinion as much from 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 trainers because technically you're a paid service. Now, I know at the high school level, when when college coaches are coming down, they're not really listening to trainers. They listen to the high school coaches. They listen to the teachers, people that aren't really that that aren't employed by the people you get what i'm saying so yeah. but that's beside the point duke was saying that he's a guard i believe he's a guard so i'm agreeing with duke here you know what i'm saying i didn't want to move him from guard but what i will say is for me there's a com there's a level of comfort of seeing him play left tackle knowing that he can do it at a high level that if we don't get the tackle that we want there's some comfort in knowing that we don't have to force it but Hearing him say that, you know what I'm saying, right now he's the guard, you know, that, that means that he's embraced that role. So yeah. I think that they're going to try and they're going to try their very, very best to, to try and get a tackle there. That's what I think that that means. Then again, though, players don't make these decisions. They don't. Coaches, coaches make these decisions and the front office makes these decisions. And this is what I'm going to say about why I think he's going to be a guard. And why I think the pick is going to be tackled <clears throat> because Tyler's already played two years. So they can always get the fifth year option, right? They can always yep. get his fifth year option. What's more, what's more expensive for him to play if he ends up panning out tackle or guard tackle. Exactly. So they'll have three years of him at guard. Now, if they get a tackle in the first round, how many years on a rookie contract do we have a tackle? If it's the first round, they, they they got five years if they get that fifth year option. Bingo. So that's why I think that that's why I think that they're they're gonna probably try and get a left tackle. And it's funny because you know they try and hide these things, but we're so smart. Like people are so smart that they kind of figure these things out. But another position that you know, I always feel like you need to get premium positions at in the first round anyway, which is which is definitely you know, tackles, tackles, quarterbacks. Uh, but you know, sometimes you can get a running back too because think about it that that after that five years, once they're about twenty eight years old, you're looking at another one anyway. But you can get a running back, you can get a corner and an edge. You know, but let's saying? be honest. But let's be honest. We all know that it's easier to find an interior offensive lineman than it is a tackle. 
anything guard, center, you know what mm. I mean? Like so typically, typically, I would typically, agree with you typically, typically, for, typically for everybody typically. else, but Dallas, for some odd reason, they good at they good they, at they know how to get some damn tackles. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, they know how to get I some damn them tackles. That. Yeah, interior, like we still looking for a center. No, I mean, well, no, I'm not gonna dog Brock Hoffman, and I hope that Brock Hoffman watches this. And you know what I'm saying? Hopefully we can collab one day. You know what I'm saying? I think that Brock, I would like to see Brock and a rookie fight it out. But That's the most I ever right. heard him talk. Yeah, and it was actually a pretty good podcast, bro. It was a really good podcast. If, if I, I'm going to try and find it and put the link in the description. I'll put the link in the description. You guys, everybody who watches this, definitely go subscribe to eighth, the eighth round. And you know what I'm saying? Look, these players out here are doing it. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to these podcasts, you know, ain't nobody going to say Brock Hoffman shouldn't have no podcast. Right, right. They're not going to say Why? Because he's not expensive like Michael Parsons is. He's not on the front screen. He's not a superstar. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But Brock, I, I look, for me, this actually sounds crazy, right? I know I'm going to sound crazy when I say this. But I've seen enough of their work that I feel okay with how the line is already right now. With them you, getting as much I, as I think they need, I think they need one more player though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, no, but I'm just saying, if if things fell apart, right? I feel a, I feel okay. I feel more. I feel better about TJ Bass at left guard than I do Brock Hoffman at center. But I saw yeah. a lot from Hoffman in that game against Washington at guard. So Hoffman has a lot of power when it comes to the run game. You look like you're about yeah. to say something. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry, my son was calling me, but no, I, uh, I really think that, and I like TJ Bass, I do, because every time he came in the game, it was like, oh, they didn't even really have to switch nothing up, and even Dak said it himself. Remember when they asked Dak in the interview? They asked him, "Was like, what do you think about T.J. Bass?" Oh, I was like, when they put him in, he even said it himself. When they put him in there, it was just like it was. I mean, he was better than um, Adoga, 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 Adoga. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the one right there, Adoga. But also keep in mind too, like we have some young guys on this roster that they that they drafted last year or had undrafted guys. Like they have Earl Bostic out of Kansas yeah. that you know um, we haven't seen much from, but you know his college tape looked pretty promising. Uh, we have uh, Awesome Richards, obviously. Like last I year, I forgot they, about Awesome Richards. Yeah, they did. I got Awesome Richards. Like you know, what I'm saying guys to push. Well, let's go and ball off the roster. To me, that's what you're looking to do. You're looking to push those bum asses off the roster. Yeah, I'm gonna call them bum asses because I mean, at the end of the day, like they've been you, riding you, this team for so long. They 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 they've had every opportunity. So I gotta look at it this way. Like obviously, an NFL player isn't a bum, but when you've had every opportunity, and you know, what I'm saying. And, and, it and they still don't out. know what to do with you. Yeah, at, at this point, I gotta call them bums, mean and get them off my roster. That that that's yeah. pretty much what it is. You know, you gotta get some fresh blood in here, and we get, we gotta get them off the roster. It it, it is what it is. You know, what I'm it's saying unfortunate, so, but and I hate to see people lose their jobs, but it is what it is. Yeah, it is. What can, it is. What, what can you do? But uh, but Chuma, but Chuma, what about you? Shouldn't we get you off the roster? Oh no 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 no. You will not get to me off the roster. I will stay right here. You understand? <laughs> what about your jollof rice? <laughs> let me let me eat my jollof in peace. <laughs> Do not disturb my peace. You are disturbing my peace. <laughs> so, are there any players in particular, like in in knowing that Tyler Smith said that you know he preferred pretty much to play to stay at guard? Are there any? I would say players that that stick out to you at left tackle that you're like, okay, now we know he wants to stay there. Who pairs up with him well at left tackle? Mm, you talking about in the draft? Yeah. Uh, what's that dude from? Um, I forgot what the school he was from. Um, was it not Texas? No, that was a defensive end. Um, I'll be honest with you. Outside of uh, Jackson Power Johnson, you know, I know he's a center. Um, I didn't really, I didn't really look at any like tackles because I figured I didn't. I thought that 
they were going to keep him on the outside and really get a, a interior guy like somebody to push TJ Bass. That's what I thought they were going to do. I didn't, I didn't, look, I, I didn't might, look. I didn't might. look. I didn't look in the direction of him being on the inside. I should have thought about that, but because that was that was where he was. But I mean, I just thought that because left tackle was so important. I would have thought that they would have just kicked him back outside, considering that that's Dak's blind spot. And I feel like he would trust Dak there. I mean, Dak would trust him in that position, and then you can get somebody to push TJ Bass or whatever for that for that interior guard spot. Yeah, but see, look, it look, he say one thing, Mike McCarthy say one thing, Jerry say one thing. Both Again, of them say, we don't know. We really exactly. don't know. Exactly. Well, problem. I mean, obviously it's GM line season, so it, it's up for us to, to to put the pieces in the puzzle together. Like it just makes a lot of sense to keep him at guard, money wise, for the long term. And you know they cheap as hell, cheap bastards. I, re- I really feel <laughs> cheap like rich bastards. <laughs> right, right. The, the cheapest, <laughs> richest people I've ever seen in my life. It's like it's like big lots, but for rich people. <laughs> Nordstrom, Nord, <laughs> Nord lots, <laughs> but look, Dollar bro, lots. Look, I'm gonna tell you this. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this as, as your brother, bro. This is the first time that I've ever seen you like really not prepared draft wise. Like, what's well, going because on? Because I, 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 this is because I've been in training academy for the. Oh, last okay, three got months. you, got you, got. You. No, but but it's not just that. that though, that's bro. why, like, I, this is the first year that I have not done my homework with the draft, and that's like I said, because I literally been in school. Like, I had to go back, like I was in college again. I was like, "Whoa, what? We got homework? You know, I got uh, a yeah. kid now, right? I don't do no homework. Yeah, you know, I'm grown. You know, I'm grown. I'm grown. Here. I got a kid, bro. <laughs> but I was saying all that to say, bro. This is probably the most down that the fan base has ever been, dog. I'll put out a draft. But that's another reason out... why. That's another yeah. reason why I didn't look at the draft. Because I, I looked at, I was like, why why am I going to look at it this year? The fan base don't give a damn. Like, I was doing videos, and, and all I saw in my comments on my videos was, e, we pissed. We don't even care right now. I was like, damn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Hold well, on. Let, me uh, just, so... let me just head on up. So I'm, I'm going to take a question right now. I'm going to take a question before we get to the next topic, and I think that's what I'm going to do whenever I see a really good question in the comments. Uh, Jack Meeker said, what y'all think about what Vach proposed? Take a center and a tackle in our first three picks. I'll let you go first. I don't mind that long as a running back is in between that. I mind it. I mind it because how many damn linemen we need to take, bro? Like, we take linemen. Every year we have linemen on – like, it's not the linemen. It's the damn scheme that needs to change, bro. It's the it's the damn scheme. It doesn't matter. We had three all pros last year, bro. I think, I think the scheme is fine. I just think that because you didn't have – we. Just, Tony Pollard can't do it by himself. Well, he couldn't do it by himself at the time. Now he's not here anymore. Now, now what you're going to do? You didn't you didn't have that lightning and thunder. That's why I said it's important to have that 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 two back. Nah, you need a special damn back, bro. You need a special back. He's not a running back. He wasn't a run. I, Tony Pollard was a weapon. He's not a, a, a in between the tackles every He's damn not. back. He's not. He's not. He's not. And so let you me ask you a question. That. Well, I know that, but the Joneses for whatever reason pussy footed around and they and and all they yeah. had to do even with the Zeke situation, all they had to do because Zeke. They could have kept Zeke. All they had to do was stop being stupid and just say, hey, this is what we're going to give you, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't like he was going to be like, oh, y'all, trifling. Whatever. He wanted to be here. So you already knew that he was going to take that. It's like the whole Stephon Gilmore thing. Stephon Gilmore don't want to go nowhere else. That's why he haven't got signed. He wants to be a Cowboy. So just sign him. It's the same yeah. thing with Zeke. Like, what are you doing? Like, just offer yeah. the guy a contract. He's going to sign it. And guess what, too, though? This 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 is this is something that I found interesting. I should have clipped it, but I didn't from the eighth round. Brock Hoffman and Tyler Smith were talking about how crazy it would have been if Derrick Henry would have signed with them. Bro. It's not the lineman, bro. It's it's it, 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 it's who's back there running. We keep talking you. about getting all these damn linemen. Get a damn running back. We didn't get a running back last year. So, so how about we the, double up at running back? Double up at running back. I'd rather double I, up at running back. Not, I not do, first three picks, but go ahead. Right, I don't agree with 
the three picks. I don't re- agree with two of the three picks being offensive line, but I do agree with Vach getting one in the Double first up, round. Yeah, yeah I, get one in the first I, round, and you could get one later. You yeah, can get one later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, that, yes. But the not first in the three first picks, three. The first three, no. You know what I'm saying? You got linebackers. We need we need a linebacker. We need defensive tackle. You know what I'm saying? We can use edge. I mean, there's so many other positions out there for us. You're to, you're gonna need yeah, you're gonna need defensive tackle and edge. Now uh, and we don't have a four, we don't have a fourth round pick. So why are we doubling up on offensive line? No. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, Mark? You know the homie popped you in see, here. What's up, Mark? Did you see what up, Mark? Yo, did you see the uh pro football focus mock draft, the latest one? Nah, what happened? It said the Cowboys would trade CD Lamb to the damn Cardinals for their first, their second, and their first for next year. I, I just heard tr- trade CD Lamb and I didn't hear the rest of that. <laughs> <laughs> I said <laughs> they first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah. and yeah. then turn back around in the same mock draft and trade Micah Parsons to uh i think the bears to get their first round pick second round pick third round pick and first for next year wah, 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 so, wah, wah. So, so so the cowboys would have ended up having four first round draft picks this year yeah now now ask the fan base would you get rid of both cd lamb and michael parsons for four first round, four four fourth round draft picks and two for next year, not including I, your own. I don't feel th- that strongly about this draft class to to, I don't to do that. I you don't know either. what I'm saying? To do that, you would so, be a fool to do that. Yeah, there, there, there's not a market Micah Parsons in this draft. It's not. It's not. There's not a part. There's not a CD Lamb in this draft. That's false. It's not. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like it, we got to look at like what CD was when he was in college. You know what I'm saying? CD was 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 that dude. Now there's closer to CD than there is closer to Micah. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, not like I'm not even entertaining that at this point. Just pay these dudes, bro. They they're the, they're some of the very best at what they do. They're very very young, and they're gonna have a lot of success moving forward. So who just do you go ahead. think is better than CD Lamb right now outside of Tyreek Hill? Maybe Justin Jefferson. That's about it. Okay. Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson. That's it. And okay. that's that's if I think that's that. I mean, and here's the thing though, it depends on who who's the quarterback. Like I wouldn't want Justin Jefferson being a receiver for Dak, or Tyreek Hill being the receiver for Dak. I think CD oh, fits Dak yeah. perfectly. You know what I'm saying? For, for he what does. he does, he does, he does. But and. Go ahead. And I know a lot of people, you know, are like, oh, well, I'm not gunning on Martavius Bryant, but I'm looking at that height, and I'm like, if that dude can do just half of what Dez Bryant could do on this team, I'm not even asking him to do what Dez did. I'm asking him to do what half of what Dez. Just get that ball and throw that up in the end zone. You got him, and then and then then you're gonna really have to worry about Cooks if 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 Martavius Bryant steps up. Man, Martavis Bryant is going to be a camp body because they, you think if so? they, yeah, for sure, bro. They couldn't get him on the field last year when you did a receiver. We, well, we, I we, think I think because he was out five years, I think last year was him literally just getting back in shape. And I think that with a with a full off season with the team and a full training camp, I think that and because I know he's been working out because I've seen him, I've, I've been seeing his videos and stuff. So um, he really wants to be a cowboy. He really wants to 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 work at his craft so it's not like he's out here just not you know that's what i normally when i see a player like that's been out let on i'll be like whatever he has been but it's something in my mind is telling me like yo he he might surprise us that might have been a a, a slippery sneaky little maybe I, 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 i've always like i've always liked martavis bryant i've always liked him so i'm not going to count him out but if they get a young guy to to come in here, like a, a like like a um, what's the guy from UCF? God, Javon Baker, I think it's Javon Baker. They get it. They get a young guy here if they get like a, a Brian Thomas Jr. Which to me that that man, I look, I'm flirting with that idea. I talked to Foots yesterday. I, I look, I'm going to be the first to tell y'all this, and and y'all gonna call me crazy right now. Hmm. Call me crazy right now. If I'm wrong, you can tell me I'm wrong. Hey, look, hey, I've been wrong before. 
I see a lot of I see Randy Moss in Brian Thomas Jr. See mm. Randy Moss, six four. I think he ran the what, what, what was it, the high four threes or something like that. Yeah, uh, dude gonna run past you, and he's he's tall and lanky. I mean, I and he runs really he runs really good routes. I mean, it's almost like this, right? Like you're at the point now where it's like it's resurfacing, where it's like there's Greg Ellis and there's Randy Moss. Yeah, you take it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's a hard decision, and don't yeah. mess it up again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But what was that? What's that? What's that one wide receiver that's I think got a first round um grade on him? He's got an African last name. I think it's like Fawn something two, something two. Receiver? Yeah. I mean, I, I know a tackle. I know Fontanu to tackle. No, not Fontanu. Not for, I know who that is. Are you talking about uh from Washington sure. the receiver from Washington? Yes, Washington receiver, yes. Uh God dang uh, uh, a Dunze. A Dunze. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> and yeah, somehow he, cold, he, he, cold. So, he cold. so what would you do? Ed? Would you would you pull that trigger at 24 if he's there? I think about it. I think about it for certain. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> look, for me, I'm team load the clip. Look, I'm BPA. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm totally I'm BPA. BPA. So if he's the you, best player, pull the trigger. You know if any if any year that you have to go BPA is definitely this year. But I'm only going BPA and I'm only standing pat if I can't find the trade back partner. Now I'm just making this clear. I would like to trade back within the first round, get my fourth round back, at least my fourth round back, so that we can really make some things shake. Because then we can get a running back, a receiver. Maybe we could double up on the lineman like Botch was saying. But not having a fourth round pick, you know makes us have to hit in certain areas that we we have to. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. running back has to be within one of our first three picks. Has to be. Yeah. Lyman has to be – like, one lineman has to be uh, within our first three picks, I believe. You know who, who, your, who are your top three backs? So, you got you got Benson, you got Brooks. Benson, um, Brooks, and Jalen Wright. Brooks and Jalen Wright. Jalen Wright, yeah. Those, Those are mine, top too. Three. Yeah. So, look, I got another segment, and I talked about it earlier this week. We're going to watch the video real fast. Because, mm -hmm. like, look, bro, hey, I did – hey, look, I prepared for this show, everybody. So, y'all better like – y'all better hit the like button, super chat, all that stuff, man, because I prepped for this show, y'all. I prepped. But we're going to watch Adam Schefter real fast, and we're going to talk. What about, about Jerry? What are they going to do at quarterback if they lose Dak? That's interesting, and that's why I think – the Dallas Cowboys might just be a sleeper team in the quarterback market during the Ooh. draft because at some point in time, they might have to draft a quarterback higher than you'd think at some point in time because Dak is going into the last year of the contract and it might be. Hold on, before, but, uh, hold on, before you say anything, hold on. Didn't I say that? Didn't I say that last week? Yeah. Didn't I say we should be looking at a quarterback? Adam yep. Schefter be watching our hey Adam Schefter be watching our stuff, bro. He does. He does. <laughs> or or he somebody do. be watching. Yeah, because we I know he, we I, know he watch Vach. We know that. Yeah, for for certain. Because what I was saying is, like I said last week, I'm like, all right, well if y'all ain't gonna sign them, or if y'all ain't close to signing them, so why y'all not looking at a quarterback? Like why not? And so Adam comes out and says that. But see, here's the thing. And I said this in my video earlier in the week. There's nothing indicating that we're getting a quarterback. They have not done their due diligence. There's no homework. There's no 30 visits. There's no combine visits. There's no, I mean, they might be a local visit, but that's not enough. When you're vetting quarterbacks, you got to see them multiple times. You have to. You got to get them in the room with a board and all that type of stuff. Like, you just don't draft a quarterback you ain't never met, bro. It just don't happen. True. And this is the thing. Everybody knows the Dallas Cowboys. If you if you're a true fan of this team, you know that the Cowboys do one thing. 30, 30 visits. We, we their 30 visits are everything. If all you got to do is look at their 30 visits to see what they're gonna do. That that that's that's the playbook right there. For sure. And and, and Jer, Jer, it's funny because Jerry had the board in his pocket, like, bro, that's your 30 visits, bro. They ain't yeah. <laughs> Your whole board is your 30 fences, bro. <laughs> yeah, they about to, they, yeah, they predictable, bro. They predictable, like, like at this point, you yeah. know Jonathan Brooks is gonna be on this team because 
you know, oh yeah for sure like well, the that, surgeon that, did the work they didn't bother yeah. for a 30 visit he was a uh -huh. local visit they, uh -huh. they talked to him at the combine like they loved that kid bro. jerry jones was over there bro. rubbing on his acl is it good son is it, is it better you think you could go out there on that field and run for us <laughs> yeah so right now we'll take a question before we get to the to, to the next subject man we're gonna right, we'll, we we'll take a question here let's see what we got man if anybody wants to ask a question I, i'm gonna go all the way up to chat okay uh michael don do you think jimmy johnson is really making his presence known with what's going on with the cowboys i'll let you take that one pause <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Say it again. <laughs> that shit threw me off. Say it again. What was the question? Do you think Jimmy Johnson is really making his presence known with what's going on with the Cowboys? Not necessarily. Yeah. I think that whole I think that whole Jimmy Johnson thing was was just uh, something that him and Jerry was talking about when they was drinking beers. And it wasn't nothing official. It's not official. It's not like he works for the Cowboys or he's got a spot on the team or anything like that. It was just a verbal agreement that, hey, if I need you, I'm going to call you. Uh-huh. That was it. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he probably was crying. He probably called them. He probably called mm -hmm. them like Draymond called Kevin Durant when they lost, when they lost in the finals. Like, I need you. I need, need you. you on this team. I want you. <laughs> Come back to me. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, nah, bro. bro. Hey, we moving, y'all. So look, I Cam got twenty nine percent. Did you have an opportunity? Did you have an opportunity to see what Cam Newton said to that? He said something else. No, no, I'm just talking about like earlier in the week when he was talking to Club Shay Shay. But we'll, we'll play the clip real fast. And we'll the Cowboys are in a very precarious situation because they find themselves in a very similar situation to where they were four years ago. Uh -huh. Dak Prescott going into the final year of his contract. Yeah. That time they 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 franchised and made the play on a franchise tag. Thought about franchising again, begin a long term deal. So here we are again. What is it that Dak needs to do? What is it that Dak hasn't done to convince the Cowboys? Because clearly they're not convinced. Because Jerry said it after, we're only going to go as far as Dak carry us, and this was as far as he could carry us. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing from Dak? What's, what's going on with Dak? What's going on with the Cowboys offense that in big games, he doesn't play his best? This message is to uh, Dak Prescott. We looking for that motherfucking dog. And I don't think Jerry Jones will allow him to become that. Because you got to be politically correct you got to be the almost the president of football almost to be the signal <laughs> caller for the dallas cowboys okay. what dallas cowboys need at that at, at that quarterback position is somebody to say now nah, fuck that <laughs> it's my shit this is what we gonna do I, I hear all that but we're trying to win we're trying to win yes or no okay cool now unleash me and let me win this football game What you think, bro? Wow. I don't. I do think that they do have a stronghold on what Dak can do. I think it's like that's the problem with the with the Joneses, right? They control too much. And I agree with that part, but Dak got it in them. But it's just that pause. Okay, pause. <laughs> Or the new one, no Diddy. Um, <laughs> that's the new one that the youngins are saying now. Take that, take that, take that, take. No, we're not taking any of that. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I really think because the Joneses control so much, it it kind of they kind of hush the players from being who they were. Look at how they were mm -hmm. back in the day. You wasn't hushing, uh, no Charles Haley. Hell no. But yeah, I no. feel like I feel like over the years it's been you come and do it the Cowboys way or you don't play for the team. Remember when Brandon Carr said something? Oh, he got cut. Oh. It's a it's it's a culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 
if your voice is too big for the Cowboys, because what they say, you ain't bigger than us. You ain't bigger than the Joneses. So, yeah. We're going to give you the glitz and glamour, but what you're not going to do is disrespect this family. <laughs> and that's unfortunate. Yeah. And I watched the Dak Attacks video on it earlier, and I think he thought that that Cam was insinuating that, that uh, you know, Dak doesn't have any dog in him. I didn't take that at all. I actually – I looked at it different. I Like – you and I, we both played before, right? Like, yeah. You ever had that one player that come to that that comes to you and says some things to you in order to inspire you? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you're right there. Yeah. They might bump. They might hit you in your shoulder, or they might smack you in the helmet. My bro, say, you got it. You got it. Yeah, exactly. Like, like I need to see that motherfucking dog right now. I need to see. I need to see it right. I actually felt that when I, when he said that. Like, I almost felt like. He was look. He was looking at that. You remember when when Draymond was talking to KD and he yeah. he, he had his hands uh-huh. like this, and uh-huh. he was saying, like he probably was saying that to him like like this is why I called you when I was in the parking lot crying. We need you. We need you to be that motherfucking dog. That's probably what was happening. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, that's kind of what I felt Cam was doing right there when he was saying that. And I don't disagree with what he was saying. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, all Dak has really is this year. You know yeah. what I'm saying? All you have is this year, so you got to go balls to the wall. Not to say that you haven't been going balls to the wall already, but you got to find a different avenue to do it. You got to find a different way. You know what I'm saying? One thing I be- love about Dak is that he don't talk back. He don't. He don't. He don't do all that drama in the media. He not gonna hear him on there trying to defend himself because at the end of the day, what if you say something, everything you're gonna say gonna be scrutinized. So he's doing the right thing. Keep your head down. Keep working out. Keep doing what you're doing. He out there throwing the ball with uh with with, with Cooks and them. So he's doing what he's supposed to do. Just go out there, ball this year, and show them that you're the man. That's all you got to do. Yeah. So every once in a while, I get a really, really good comment, you know, outside of a Super Chat. So I, 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 agree, with you know I agree with Absolutely. that comment. I agree with that comment. And I feel sorry for I Michael think that's Hunter what Cam was too. saying. I think that's what he was saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, unleash me. Like, let me be who I'm going to be. Let me this be who thing. I'm gonna be. This is the thing. Why? Why are and I? First of all, I said this on my channel when Mike McCarthy first got hired. You can go back and look at my videos. I literally said, "Yo, how you gonna hire a coach and then not let him coach?" Well, it's let your coach coach and let your players play. We were still we were still running Jason Garrett's playbook with Mike McCarthy for Mike McCarthy's first three years. So, and everybody was talking about, oh, he on the hot seat. First of all, I scratch out the first two years. Let's get these 12. I mean, he got you these 12 wins. You know what I'm saying? I, I know that the fan base is sick and tired of, you know, not making it past the second round. And I get it. I get it. I'm there with you. But it ain't Mike McCarthy. And it ain't Dak, Dak Prescott. If you're going to be mad at anybody, you need to be mad at this ownership. Now, the only way that that's going to stop is that they sell the team, or if we just stop, or if we just stop supporting the team? Well, I'm about to say, dog. Look, YouTube numbers is down right now. Every creator that I know that's doing YouTube videos at this time, where it's draft time, oh, and bro, it's garbage. down. So garbage. I can only imagine ticket sales. I can only imagine with the like meaning like the the um season. I'm not holders. going to no games this season Ooh. until until they prove me wrong. I'm not doing nothing. Yeah, no. Nah. And how do I say this, bro? How do I say this? They still playing Thunderstruck, bro. Like, they still playing Thunderstruck when they come in. Like, I mean, like, if you're in the Cowboys Stadium, like, ain't no hey, – like, most of your players, like, they 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 can't get jiggy with the music you have going on in the arena. Like, they, they do what they like, bro. They do what they like. They do what they like with everything. You know what I'm saying? And, and every time I see Steven with that smug look on his face, I be wanting to just smack him. You ever just look at Steven Jones and just want to smack him in the mouth? It's almost like how I look at uh, 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 the Eagles coach. He's got a punchable face. Steven Jones got a smackable face. Like, when you see him, you just want to just open hand, just... 
Hey, but whole time though, I heard Stephen about that life though. That's what I heard. Oh, uh, that was Jared. I heard, I heard Anthony Anthony Dorsett uh, Jr. came on this channel and said, "Yeah, you you like they some they some big dudes, bro. They they they, they <laughs> Jerry will tell you to get your act together in a heart in, in, in a heartbeat. They they some rich thoroughbreds. That's what I heard. Jerry need to go sit down somewhere and and, and take his Gerald talk. He just need to go on that yacht and let somebody like run the team and you know what I'm saying just just chill, bro. Collect your money, collect your money. You'll get you'll still get the credit, Jerry. We'll give you bro. the credit." You got so much look, money, bro. You can't take it with you when you die, bro. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, bro, we'll give you the credit. I promise we'll give you the credit, man. So, look, we'll open it up for a, a, a quick Q&A, and then we'll get into uh, we'll, we'll get into the, 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 the fun part of the show. You know what I'm saying? Because, look, it's bad when I say, like, the cowboy stuff that we were talking about. It's Damn, I got 18%. Part. Oh, Lord. Oh, man. We got – yeah, we we definitely – Yeah, we, we got to have to have it. You gotta you gotta speed through guys. So like let's see if we have any questions. Uh Joe Gonzalez said, Hey E2, how are you doing? I'm good, Joe. How are you doing, Joe? She, she's such a trooper, isn't she? She's such we a trooper. We love sweetheart. Joe. Joe Every, been everywhere. there since the beginning. She's the day, day one. one. Day one Shout for out sure. to Joe Gonzalez. Somebody said hood wearing Steven. <laughs> <laughs> He probably don't own the hood, bro. He probably got like if he do, it's that shooter McGavin joint. Like, hey, bro, Stephen Hood Jones. <laughs> 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 what uh, what uh, what big game James called him? Baby nuts. Yeah, he called him baby nuts. <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like big game would really fight him in person, bro. Big game, I feel like big game will put hands on Steven, bro. He would, Real he tough. would, because he can't stand Steven. Every time I talk to Big Game James, he'd be like, bro, I can't stand goddamn Steven. Man, I gotta call, I gotta call, bro. I ain't heard from bro in a minute. Though. Look, I haven't talked to him in a while either. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro, we down bad. Like, like, you know, like the other day at, at a 707 tournament, my son's team they got whooped up on. I had to go to the quarterback, tell him to put his chin up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, put your chin up, like. Don't don't hang your head down. You did all Never. you could do, yep. bro. Fans, hold y'all chin up, bro. Do not let Green Bay beat the life out of us. I said this on Boston Show last night. Green Bay beat the life out of us, and and most what? importantly, don't let a fan from a rival team in our division talk shit to you, either. especially no. no Commanders. So you need to go nah. ahead and leave, let that be. Yeah, hold y'all chin up high. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that we have to take any of the crap. I'm not saying we got to buy any of the stuff they're trying to sell us, meaning the organization. We ain't got to buy. We ain't got. But but look, Green Bay whooped our ass three months ago. It's time for us to stop soaking. Time for us to stop soaking. You know, we still trying to figure out why we got our ass kicked. We got our ass kicked because we got our ass kicked. That's it. It is what it is. It happens. There's a lot of people that aren't here anymore after that ass kicking. And a lot of them are in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the truth, bro. It's true. It's true. It's true. We got to be able to move forward. We got to move forward. But at the same time, you can forget, but don't forget. Do not forget. Do not forget what this front office has been doing to you for however long. So yeah. we deserve to put a foot in their ass right now. They deserve to get a foot in their ass. They deserve yeah. it wholeheartedly. You know what I'm saying? They deserve that. But this whole Green Bay, woe is me. Like, they whooped us. We we ain't going to be this. We ain't going to be that. Like, nah, bro. That's that's not the Cowboy Nation that I know. We're, mm -hmm. the, we're the toughest fan base that there is. You want to know What's why that we're shirt? the toughest fan base? What's that shirt we used to wear back in the day? Win, lose, or draw? I'm a fan above them all. Something like that. All I know is, all I know is, bro, no matter how bad it's gotten, we've always got up. Get y'all asses up, bro. Get up. Get up, bro. All right, we got whooped. You know what I'm saying? We've gone through three back-to-back-to-back 5-11 -to -back -to -back seasons, and we're still here. Yeah. We've gone through back-to-back-to-back 8-8 -back -to -back -eight seasons, and we're still here. We went Ooh, through a playoff Jason loss. 
Yeah, we went through a playoff loss where Tony Romo dropped the damn snap. Oh. Yeah, oh, bro, we've been, we, no. we, we been through it, bro. Get y'all asses up, bro. It's time to stop sulking. We done been through. What's up? Damn near all this, the bad, the worst scenarios that you could think of. And yeah. yet, we still the most talk about team in the NFL. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. Jack Meeker said it. 89, we were 1 and 15. Bro, we done been, th- we done been through. The only thing, look, I'm yeah. not saying don't, don't, tr- yeah. I'm not saying trust what you see. I'm just saying don't hold your head down. Don't At take all. crap off nobody. Nobody. Period. Don't take crap off nobody. Period. Yeah, bro. Yeah, at the end of the day, look, our content creators, we're out here working our butts off to try and get you guys the new news. We're trying to get you these draft picks. You want to know where with, with the biggest videos that are hitting right now is a whole bunch of negativity, a whole mm-hmm. bunch of gossip and TMZ uh, 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 BS right now. Bro, nothing of substance. We want to hear sulking. We want to hear crying. Damn that, bro. Damn that. Congratulations. <laughs> I refuse I refuse I refuse to turn into that, bro. I refuse to turn into to the to the guy that, that that's gonna pat you on the back while we still crying over a playoff loss. Hell, the Green Bay loss where, where damn Aaron Rodgers threw that damn ball to uh uh, uh Michael uh, Finley. Uh, uh yeah was it uh the tight end? Yeah. Yeah, that, that that twinkle that twinkle toes catch. The twinkle toes, yeah. yeah. Uh, that that was what in my opinion, that felt that hurt me more than us getting our ass kicked this year. That hurt more. So hey, at the end of the day, guys, we gotta find a way to get up and get back to what we do best. And that's that's being being loyal to the cause, being loyal to each other, you know. And, and content creators, too. Mark put out a video yesterday. Mark put out a video. You know what I'm saying? It was a rap beef video. You know, it was pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? Name damn there, everybody, and it, as far as content creators. But it made me think, bro. We spend so much time as content creators beefing with each other that there's a bigger cause out there. We all want the same thing. So from now on, hell, I had a problem with Simons at one point. I don't have a problem with Simons no more. You want to know why? Because Simons once was best for this organization, just like I do. Yes. Might say it a different way, but at the same time, look, we have the old media within our organization feeding us stuff and trying to to, to dog us out when all in all actuality we love this team. Right. We wouldn't be here if we didn't love this team. You they know don't. what I'm saying? We should be working together. But if that's how the game wants to be played, we can't afford as content creators to be fighting amongst each other, bickering, bickering amongst each other. We can't afford to do that because we have a message to send to this front office that that we're tired of this shit. We're tired of this, bro. We want to win games. We don't give a damn about y'all being a seven billion, eight billion dollar franchise. We don't give a damn about that. We don't care. We bro, don't. We are hurting. We want to win championships. I'm tired of going to my group chats with my friends. And being a laughing stock, tired of going 12 and 5 and saying this is our year. You know what I'm saying? I think this team is different. Oh boy. I'm tired of saying that and then coming back to the same old thing. I'm tired of lie. it. You ain't never tired lie. of it. Tired of it. I'm tired. The only way that things are going to change is if we band together. That's the only thing we haven't done. And I feel bad about it. I feel bad because I've been part of the bickering the bickering and all of that type of stuff, but that stops now. That stops now. We got it. We look, we got a band together. Cowboys mafia, moron mountain. We got a band together and and, and we got to send a message. Yeah. We, we got to send a message. All right. However you got to do it. That, <laughs> that, was, that was my fury. day. Yeah, <laughs> you remember Soul Food when she was like, "You take uh-huh. those five fingers and you turn them into a fist." Eight <laughs> percent. Yeah, but nah, for real though. Like any any of the Cowboys content creators, uh, really. I mean, unless you disrespect me, I could I could disagree with you all day. 
you know what I'm saying? Disrespect is something that I won't take, but I'm willing to communicate. I'm willing to communicate. And, and really, we have to – we're all saying the same things, but we're saying it in different in different languages. Imagine and we just got to be able to had, break that. Imagine if we had an all-cowboy content creator podcast. Like I, every single one of us, bro. So was, I'm working on it. I'm working on something. I'm working bro, on something, bro. I'm bro, working on something. That's a lot of you know us. You talk about West Coast space, Vach, Cowboys blog. Cowboys. You talking? You talking about we are the world? Like that? That song? That type of like like every like the whole like us on like a whole like a like a Zoom call type of jump. I think I I honestly think the best way to do that. Is in person. I don't in think person, yeah. Really, I don't think you could really capture that on the computer. Nah, I think that could. somebody needs to organize a, a Cowboys get up. And yeah. we kind of did it with the Philadelphia game last year. We, like a lot of yeah. us content creators came in town. But but now that I'm saying? getting things are getting better for me, I'm thinking I'm able to, to do that going forward. But we do yeah. gotta uh log off soon. We we might have to like and I apologize to the fan base. My um my my charger on my laptop broke and I'm at six percent charge power right now. So um w- the stuff that we were gonna do at the end, we're gonna add it to the next show, guys. Yeah, yeah, for certain, man. So look, we gotta cut this short, everybody. My guy Mark Holmes has a show in about 10 minutes. Everybody make sure that you know what I'm saying, go take a bathroom break. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all got iPads, so y'all might be using the bathroom while y'all watching the iPads. But Mark has a, a, a show. Obviously, he, he does his show every Monday, every Friday, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're just a warm-up act right here. We, we're as kids. Yeah. We're the warm-up act <laughs> right. for Mark. You know what I'm saying? We the, open, we the opening act. <laughs> yeah, we the opening act. I'm definitely going to be in the chat over there. And um, we definitely got to put something together. Uh I, I look. I just came up with that in my mind. Like at first, I was thinking like we should have a stream, but I just think it's more powerful if if we all somehow band together. Uh, I know we're not about going to games anymore. Like damn all that until they show us something. <laughs> damn all that until they show us something. But it might be willing for for it might be willing for all of us to to create an event where we all meet up and and and, and we make it so powerful that that it's seen. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You can have all the radio stations and all the credential people and all this type of stuff talk all this trash about us, but they're gonna want to be where we're at. It they're gonna want to because at the end of the day, we got the sauce. We got the yeah. sauce. You know I what I'm saying? But appreciate everybody, man. We're gonna tune out. I'm gonna put this outro up, and you know, we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about well. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about the fun stuff next time. But we were going to talk about WrestleMania. And I'll, I'll go over it a little bit real, real fast. But, you know what I'm saying? WrestleMania just hit this week, this past weekend. It was a big, big show. And, you know, we definitely, we definitely got to treat the Joneses how my guy, how the Rock got treated. <laughs> we definitely are going to have to be able to. To you know, we're going up against the corporation at this point, kind of like when we were younger and we watched the the Rock as the corporation and Stone Cold Steve Austin. We gonna have to break the glass and stun one of these sons of bitches. That's what we gonna have to do. <laughs> Stone Cold, Stone. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. But appreciate y'all, man. We gonna we we gonna hit this outro. You got anything for the people before we head on out? E two. Um. Just so y'all know, let let your people know who haven't been on with us. We're doing this thing every Friday now in the off season. Uh, me and DMV. So, uh, keep liking, keep coming to the channel, keep supporting. Tell a tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a friend. Absolutely, and, and watch the playback and share it with your people. All right, appreciate y'all, man. We out. Peace. I can't feel the pain. I'm numb. All you say. Keep it real and stay 100 through the rain yeah. I can't feel it, something missing from your face yeah. Just keep it real and stay 100 in your veins Put me in these boxes, still I'm trying to break away 
I just roll it up and down some liquor for my pain Thoughts inside my head, it's nightmares instead of some dreams I've been trying to hold on to everything from the seams Try to get it by any means It's no accepting the feet with all this pressure that's on me Trusting whenever I breathe, cause everything is on me If everybody is down, I gotta pick up all the pieces Yeah, uh, I can't fall, cause I do it for my dog So she can make it fall, and worry about your comments Cause I believe in karma, no time for your bullshit or anything